Welcome back. Um, this uh, this uh, video uh, introduces you to uh, from basic functionality of a oscilloscope. Oscilloscopes, uh, most oscilloscopes these days are digital oscilloscopes. Basically, means that the signal is getting that you put into it is going to be digitized and then displayed for you. You can think of a oscilloscope as a voltmeter that allows you to continuously look at the signal as it's coming through. And the way it does it, it tries to catch the signal at the same point. And if you've got a periodic signal that repeats itself, it's going to repaint the same signal, so it's going to look really clean to you. So let's kind of get started before we go too far uh, with uh, how you turn it up. Most, most things have a button. You touch press the button to turn it on and off. And scopes cables are, are basically more of a coaxial cable. So I want to kind of show you this to make sure we you have seen the scopes. Scope is a very delicate instrument. Uh, not that the other instruments are not delicate, but they uh, the scope is even more delicate than the rest of the equipment. So please use caution. No force should be required. So when you get it, this this is the only connection. This is the only connector that you should use. Uh, the name of this connector typically is referred to as a probe. One end looks like this, like more or less like the, your cable connection that you get at home. And this is the other side of it. Almost all of them will have some ability to go between a 10x attenuate 10x or 1x, so they can make your signal a little smaller to keep your scope safer, or you go at full length. For this course, let's go ahead and always have the setting at 1x, uh, which allows you to see the signal as it's being generated. Okay, so find the probe. Uh, typically, probes are in a your first cabinet as you come in. So grab a probe, just one, that's all you need. And a scope should be available most of the time on the bench. So the scopes have slight variation to each other, but they're fundamentally the same. So they have this particular pro, pro, uh, uh, scope has multiple channels. This one has two channels, channel one and channel two. So you can look at two signals at the same time you can compare them, you can add them, there's a whole math menu attached to it. But what we're going to do now, we're just going to learn how, for this video, we're going to focus on how one channel works. So you turn the device on, okay, and then we're going to wait for it to come up. And then I have a function generator here, and I'm not going to do anything fancy, just going to set it to run, let's say, at something simple like, uh, let's say, 5, and I'm going to set it at 5 kilohertz. So we got a signal generator here, it's kind of, you can kind of see it sitting on the side. These are the plus and minus connections coming in, and we're going to have that running. Okay, so the scope is up and running right now, nothing is connected to it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to take this probe, uh, this side of the probe, we're going to place it in and gently push it in, gently. If you shouldn't use two finger and your finger should be as gently as you can turn it and you hear a click which snaps it in much like the cable at home with a lot less force. And then now this scope have scope probes have two pieces. This side of the probe is always chassis ground, which means it's always connected to the ground of the building, the safety ground of the building. So you always want this to go to the black connection or the commons or to chassis ground of the signal generator. Okay, because they both now are connected to the um, chassis of the building. And then the red connection going to be that. So the way this works, it's got a jacket. If you pull the jacket, the little lip comes up. If you see that lip over there, and you can use that to grab. Be gentle again. Everything should be very gentle. So there you go. Now I'm connected, 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the screen here. Okay. Now, the, 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 the scopes are great because they have, if you don't know, if let's say things got really messed up and you don't know what's going on, there's a place called auto set. You press it and the scope will automatically try to figure out how best to set it. Okay. So what we got the scope doing, and I'm going to shut the light off here so you can get a better look at the screen. Okay. So here is the screen, and let me see if I can get you a better uh, view of it. Okay, hopefully you get a you get a good view of it. I'm I'm kind of going on faith here. Let me turn this just a little. Okay, so let's read. It tells you if you look. Um, dark okay so if you look down in this corner you see that channel one is five volt for division so what is referring to the division is from here to here is one division two division three division four division five six and each one of those division is five volts so if I were to look at this particular signal I see it's got one division, two division, three, so it's a little more than 15 volts I'm looking at peak to peak here. The other things you will look at is that is your, um, you are on channel one, it's telling you it's channel one, and then if you look down below it tells you even that you're running at a little over five kilohertz, so you don't even have to do anything, it's telling you all that. One other thing is saying 100 microsecond. That's telling you the x-axis, the horizontal axis, each division from here to here is one division. So roughly this one cycle of this is about one, two division, or more or less so two micro, 200 microsecond, which makes sense. So if it's five kilohertz, then each period would be a couple hundred microsecond, roughly. So, so now I'm going to, so now that you see, and here is telling you some means of what you're seeing and it's telling you peak to peak. Oh, here it is. It's peak to peak is 21.4 volts. So you don't even have to count. It tells you everything you need to know. So again, the scope, the way it's set up is that uh, the vertical axis is voltage. It tells you what the per division voltage is and you can change it. Uh, with the knob and I'll show you in a minute once we turn the light back on so you can see it and then the horizontal one is time so it's time versus voltage and it's showing you how the signal is changing now you see a little arrow in here that's the trigger point and the trigger point has to be within the min max of the signal if I do if I do take that trigger point out notice I'm moving it moving it when I get out then it doesn't know where to start the signal and this becomes really messy. Now notice, remember I was telling you there is a button called auto set. If you ever get uh, messed up, you just go back and press the auto set and it will fix it for you. Okay? So let's go ahead and put the trigger back in. And all is good. So let me go ahead and turn the light back on and talk a little bit about the various buttons on this thing. So we are working with channel 1, which is right here, and I'm going to zoom back out so you can see a little more of the scope. So notice I've connected my cable to channel 1. Now if I want to make the volt division something different than 5 volt per division, all I have, uh, I'm sorry, all I have to do is, uh, that moves it up and down, here we go and I turn this lower knob. When I turn the lower knob, the signal is not changing. All I'm telling is now I'm saying the volt per the division, you can see it is down here, is saying it's 20 volts per division. So I go back to five. Now I'm saying five volt division. Now I can make it bigger, of course, if you want a bigger one. So that basically controls how big each one of the vertical divisions are. This one just moves it up and down. That's all it does. These knobs it just allows you to move them up and down. Okay. 
and uh, let's see what else can I tell you that's pretty much it the rest just play with it and learn now of course the this is called the horizontal axis or the time axis I can play with this so sometime I might want to maybe get a more accurate read or look at one period only so all I have to do is instead of 100 microsecond per division maybe I can reduce it to maybe 50 <coughs> or even less we are at 25 microsecond per division so this button by turning it allows you to increase or decrease the size of each horizontal division this one allows you to do the vertical the voltage this allows the horizontal or time this the same way as the vertical allowed vertical knob here allowed you to move it up and down this one allows you to move it left and right so sometime I want to know at the minimum so I can see it um, different reasons okay whatever your reason is you can do any of that stuff there is a whole mess of other buttons here but we've talked about all the key one basically how to turn it on the switch is up here what you see on the screen pressing channel 1 to make sure the channel 1 is coming up and then um, this knob to allow you to change the vertical division size this to allow you to, I'm sorry, this to allow you to move it up and down if you choose. This is the horizontal axis, which allows you to change the time horizontally per division and allow you to move the signal back and forth if you choose to. That's pretty much it. Remember the trigger. The trigger is here. Remember that is the point where it starts. And if the, you take the trigger all the way out, notice the trigger is in this corner. This little arrow as it moves up and down if I take that out of the signal it goes every time it catches it it catches it at different times so you see this running thing so we'll bring bring the thing back in and it's always good to remember auto set auto set is pretty awesome this not all not all um, scopes have it but this scope has an auto range which basically once you press it it keeps tracking your signal and readjusting your scope to make sure you get it now once in a while you get a signal that is not periodic but it goes away and you just want to stop and look at it and this run stop allows you to just catch one and look at it okay so those are pretty much the key features of this instrument of course the manual is online and this can do a lot more thing we had one channel used of course you can use the second channel compare them together or do whatever it else you need to be doing um, well that pretty much brings us to the end of this introduction video um, see you on the next one